building your house flipping dream team. Hey guys, it's Brad from probatehouseguy.com. So I specialize in probate and inheritance properties, but I've been flipping and wholesaling houses for a number of years. I'm based out of Georgia, but I flip all over Georgia and even in other states too. And I am going to go through the people you need on your house flipping dream team if you want to flip houses. Because this house flipping is a team sport. You've got to have a great team on your hands because you can't do everything yourself. Don't try to flip houses and do everything yourself. Like, for example, I am a very handy person and I am capable of doing lots of things. If you go to my personal uh, YouTube, you can see all the skills I have. I can do all the things, but I, when it comes to flipping houses, I don't do all the things. I subcontract everything out because time is money. Okay, so let's talk about this. Number one, you need to have a real estate agent on your team. And, and, and all of these people, you should have two or three of them in your Rolodex, right? Really in your phone, right? You need to make sure you have multiple people because not everyone is going to be able to get to things in time. Okay, so you need a real estate agent or real estate agents that you trust. These real estate agents are going to be your boots on the ground. They're ultimately going to list the property for you. They're going to help you do research on the property. They're going to help you out. Make sure you compensate them accordingly. If they're running errands for you, make sure you're paying them for their time and not just like telling them, oh, you'll get a commission when I go to sell it, right? Make sure you're you're being straightforward with, with how you're paying them. Okay, you need real estate agents. Now let's get into the trades. This is the complicated one. I like to have lots of different trades and subcontractors. Um, and if I'm doing a project that requires me to get permits, sometimes if you're doing just cosmetic stuff like carpet and paint, in most municipalities, you don't really need a, a permit to, to paint walls and replace carpet and put new cabinets and that's like cosmetic stuff but you need to check with your local municipality. But if you're getting into like framing and electrical and plumbing and, and I'm, I'm, plumbing, I'm talking about like changing pipes and locations and stuff. Now, if you're just swapping a faucet out, whatever, in most cases, you don't need a permit for that. But in some places in the country you do, I think it's crazy that some places require you to get a permit to change a faucet out. That's just asinine to me, but that's a different story for a different day. Okay, so let's talk about the trades. You need, and again, like I said, multiples of each trade electrician and also let me let me backtrack one thing the types of trades that you're going to hire you're looking for the chuck in a truck you're looking for the solo guy or maybe one or two guys or maybe it's a guy with a helper you're not hiring the big giant companies that you see all over tv with all their marketing budgets and their advertising because they're expensive they probably do great work and a lot of them do but they're also very expensive and all that comes with a price. So I like to hire the truck in the truck. I like to hire the guy that likes to work solo. He does good work. He's reasonably priced and don't beat your contractors down on price. So many investors just beat them up on price and then they don't want to do business with you anymore because you're a cheapskate. Don't be a cheapskate. I can't tell you how many times I see other investors that are trying to flip houses and they're just nickel and diamond their contractors to death over stupid stuff and it's just like guys this guy's not gonna work for you anymore because you're just being a cheapskate stop it right imagine if you, if, if you were in their shoes and someone's questioning everything you did and you you'd say you know what screw you go do it on your own right okay so the house flipping dream team let's talk about it you need an electrician your electrician's going to do electrical work for you. Um, my electrician, I have one guy that I have used for a number of years and I trust him thoroughly. He actually just checked out a property for me this morning. He called me up. I called him a few days ago and said, hey, we've got this house under contract. Can you go check this place out? Just do a run through of the electrical system. Let me know. He does that on all my properties. He'll swing by ahead of time. It takes him like 10 minutes to walk through a house and he'll say, hey, you're going to need, you know, new breakers. You're going to need this. You're going to need GFIs here. This wiring looks kind of funky. It looks like Mickey Mouse did this wiring. No, no, no. He'll run through, make me a list of everything we need to do. And I trust his list because he never tries to sell me on things I don't need. Um, ironically, these bigger giant companies you're going to see um, all the marketing for, they're probably going to sell you on stuff you don't really need because they make their money on sales. They're trying to upsell you on all the things, right? And that's good for them, right? But not good for you. So make sure you pick a trusted contractor, a trusted electrician, whoever. You also need a plumber. Plumbers are expensive. Don't hire cheap plumbers, but also don't hire the most expensive guy. Find the ones in the middle. Plumbers are expensive, okay? And they're worth their money, okay? Um, you're also gonna need a countertop guy. 
because you're going to need and, and a lot of these people specialize in specific things i don't like to hire the jack of all trades kind of guy the handyman type guy because typically they're hacks they're jack of all trades master of none they're not good at doing all the things they do kind of crappy work and then you end up spending extra money to go back and fix their work okay so again let's get back electrician plumber um you're gonna need a countertop company that's gonna do countertops for you whether you're doing granite quartz whatever they're gonna do your countertops for you okay typically that company's also gonna install the sink but you're gonna need a plumber to come back and actually hook up the pipes under the sink once they put the new sink in and put in the new faucet. Most countertop places don't do plumbing, right? Okay, so you need a plumber to do that. Okay, you're gonna need a flooring person. Sometimes you've got all-in-one flooring people who do um, you know, vinyl plank hardwoods and carpet. Um, also what I found is a lot of times hardwood floor refinishing companies only do that. So they only refinish hardwoods, that's it. Or they subcontract it out to someone who only does refinishing hardwoods. So what I like to do is get straight to the subcontractor and just hire the guy and say, hey, so-and-so, I need you to go refinish the hardwoods at this house, blah, 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 blah. They'll go measure it. Then you're getting the wholesale price on that rather than the uh, contractor markup because they're subbing it out to somebody else. Okay, hardwood floor refinishers are typically their own sort of crew. And then you have the LVP installers. A lot of the flooring installers will do LVP, engineered hardwoods, regular hardwoods. They'll all install it all at the same time, right? And then what I've found a lot of times is carpet people just do carpet. That's it. Now, some of the carpet people also do like vinyl plank, but a lot of them just do carpet all on its own. So you need a carpet guy, multiple carpet guys, flooring installers. Okay. And then you've got tile people. Make sure you've got good tile people, not hack tile people, because hack tile people do hack tile work and you're gonna have to pay more money to tear it out or it's gonna break down the road or you put in a shower and it wasn't adequately waterproofed and two years from now you're getting sued by the person who bought your house because their shower's falling apart because you hired some hack subcontractor who doesn't know how to properly waterproof a shower and do tile properly and now this this you know thousand dollar to however many thousand dollar shower that you put in is now failing because they didn't do waterproofing correctly. Correctly is the key. Just because they say they've been doing something for 20 years doesn't mean they've been doing it correctly for 20 years. Remember that. So you're gonna need a tile person. Um, I have a few different tile people and I have good, better, best, right? So I have a good tile guy, I have a better tile guy and a best tile guy. I also have a tile guy that I only put on kitchen backsplashes. He doesn't really get um, shower waterproofing so I don't put him on shower waterproofing jobs because he doesn't quite understand that, but he's great at putting tile backsplashes in. Backsplashes look great. So if I ever need a backsplash in a kitchen, I send this one guy over. He goes and does the backsplash, bangs it out, da da da, right? Okay, so I have him and then I have like the good, better, best, like I said. And all of these, you should have good, better, best because sometimes you might have to pay a little bit more, more money for the best guy because your good and your better guy aren't available for two weeks. And if you sit around and you wait for the project for two weeks to pass, it's costing you money every day. So it's actually better for you to hire the best guy to come in because he can come in tomorrow and do the job tomorrow and get it done, but he's probably the most expensive. But if you had waited two weeks, it's gonna cost you more money. So think about that. Think about time is money and how much that costs you. I just did that yesterday. I hired, I have an ele a friend who is an electrical manager of a very large electrical outfit. I don't use them often for electrical work, but I needed something done and they had an all the, this house was close to their office and they could get a guy out there in about two days. And um, my other electrician that I've used for years, he was two weeks out from doing a project. So I called this other company. Yeah, it cost me a few hundred dollars more to hire this company to go do this particular electrical thing. But I got him out there in two days and I got the job done and we're getting the house listed on Monday, we're getting photographs done on Sunday. It looks like my calendar, everything's coming into play and we'll we'll be ready to list the house on Monday. You're gonna need a, a deck guy, okay? So you might be replacing a deck. Make sure you have a good, reputable deck installer. Don't just hire a handyman hack. Make sure that they know how to do decks. If you don't know how to do all this, Instagram and YouTube are out there and there's great people on all these platforms that actually teach you how to do things the right way. Just because you may not be doing it yourself, you should still watch it and understand the difference between a good product and a bad product. Pay attention. Okay, you're gonna need a siding guy, okay? Um, sometimes deck guys and siding guys do the same. 
So my deck and siding guys are actually the guys that did the deck and the siding on my personal home that I'm in right now. Um, and uh, they do decks and siding. So I have them do my decks and my siding. Sometimes, and I'm gonna get to the next one, you're gonna need framers, okay? There's different framers out there. There's like pickup framers that do like basements and like little framing work. And then there's framers that wanna frame like a whole house. Sometimes the guys that wanna do the whole house aren't gonna wanna do your little tiny job for you. So you need to make sure that you have somebody who's a framer who can do small jobs for you. Um, sometimes the framers do decks. Sometimes framers don't do decks. You need to figure out whether they do decks or not. Sometimes I've seen framers who are terrible at framing decks for some reason. They can frame an entire house, but they're awful at framing a deck. I don't understand why. You're gonna need a roofer. You're probably gonna need roof repairs. And a lot of times repair people and roof replacement people are two different contractors. So you need roof repairs and you need roof replacement and have a few of those people in your Rolodex so you can call them, get multiple quotes. More than likely it's gonna be six of one, half dozen of the other, but get multiple quotes. Um, and then also they're gonna ask you, and this makes a difference in price, do you want me to get workman's comp on the guys or not? That's a risk that you need to take. If they get injured on the roof and he didn't pay for workman's comp, I don't know. Sometimes it's worth it to pay, sometimes it's not. That's your call. But that can save you money because workman's comp for roofing is extremely, extremely expensive and can literally add like $1,500 to $2,000 to the price of the job. Okay. So just keep that in mind. You also need a garage door guy. Typically garage door people only do garage doors. That's all they do. So I have a great garage door guy that I have used for years and years and years since one of my very first flips. Ironically, he was the helper of the guy who did the garage door, but he ultimately bought the business from the guy that I had hired to do a garage door on one of my first flips. And this guy has been my garage door guy ever since. He's awesome. I just called him this morning. He's actually replacing your garage door for me um, on Friday. I, I sent him some texts and I said, hey man, this garage door has got a couple dents in it. Can we get the dents out? He looked at the pictures. He's like, I can try, but he said, I don't think you're going to be happy with this. He's like, I can get you a whole new door for 600 or 700 bucks installed. And I said, great. When can you do it? He said, let me look at my calendar. He said, I can be there Friday morning. And I can change it out Friday morning. Perfect. Do it, right? So he's going out there and replacing a garage door for me on Friday. He also does garage door repairs. He installs openers for me. He's my garage door guy. I call him all the time when I need garage door work. Um, you're gonna need good painters and you also need good, better, best, depending on the project you're doing. Make sure you have good, better, best. Also, there's, there's a saying in construction, which is you get good, fast, and cheap, and you can pick two out of the three. Always remember that. Okay, so make sure you have multiple painters. I have multiple painters. Although I have a painter that's become more of a painting contractor and he has good, better, best crews. And depending on the scope of the project, he may put a different crew on one project. He also has some crews that I say, I don't want them on my projects. I want this guy or that guy. Typically on most of my projects, he puts the same crew on my projects. So I know the guys and I know the subs. Uh, and the subs know that I go through him and everything's cool. His pricing is great, right? Love the guy. My painter's been painting for me for years. He's a fantastic guy. Okay, you also need landscapers, okay? Typically, landscape maintenance people and landscape installer people, so people who do like hardscapes, plants, pine straw, da-da-da-da-da. The landscape maintenance people and landscape installers are typically two different contractors. Some do both, but a lot of times they're different people. What is maintenance and what's installer? Maintenance is somebody who goes and mows the grass and does all the, trims the bushes, da 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 da. Those are maintenance people. And a lot of maintenance people do pine straw, mulch and stuff like that. But if you have a main, if you have a landscape install project, whether you're putting plants in, you're doing pine straw, you're doing, uh, you know, trees and shrubs, well, I already said plants, so trees and shrubs and that sort of thing, or you're doing uh, like hardscape stuff, like you're putting in like a paver patio, although you're probably not putting in a paver patio to flip, sometimes you are, but most of the time you're not. Um, or you got to like replace a retaining wall. That's going to be a different landscape contractor than a maintenance guy. I know this because I used to own a landscape maintenance business. And when you get in the peak of the season, you don't have time for anything else. You're mowing lawns all day, every day from May till October. Now, if it's the slow season, a lot of these guys will do installs in the winter time. Um, but ironically, most people want their landscape stuff installed in the summer and the springtime. 
and in which case you're so busy doing maintenance, maybe you have multiple crews, in which case you have an install crew and you have a maintenance crew, but those are typically two different contractors, so understand that. You're also going to need a pressure washing person. I like to just pick people who only do pressure washing, that's it, because that's all they do day in and day out, and they typically have the equipment, they can come in and bang it out. You can probably get your landscaper or your painter to pressure wash a house, um, and they can probably get to it in a few days, but I like to have actual pressure washing companies because you're probably going to need to pressure wash, power wash a house, right? Um, also, from the roof perspective, um, find pressure or power washing companies that wash roofs. Now, don't pressure wash a roof. Don't ever, ever, ever pressure wash a roof. But um, one of my power washing guys, one of the crews I use, uh, I've used him for years, he uh, can also clean roofs. He has a special solution and a special spray nozzle that's low pressure that he was able to spray and he sprays stuff so if you get uh, like an older roof uh, that has like moss and stuff on it he can spray that and actually kill the moss you're also going to need a good real estate photographer good photographs make all the difference in the world so make sure you have a good real estate photographer all right so let's go back through the list electrician plumber countertop flooring tile decks siding framers roofers garage doors landscape mains pressure washers real estate agents painters, photographers. Um, also, here's another one. You need a good water mitigation. You need a few uh, water mitigation people. And what do I mean by that? So if you have a house with a flood and I've had some houses flood, um, you need someone who can come in and do the emergency disaster recovery water mitigation. Those same people a lot of time also have the equipment to deal with smokers houses, okay? Um, the project I was just talking about with the garage door, that was a smokers house. I have a guy that goes out to the house before everyone gets in there. We usually typically will do like demo. We'll take all the carpet and stuff out of the house. But if it's a smoker's house, he will go into the house and he has special machinery. Sometimes if it's really bad, he'll clean the walls with this cleaning solution, scrubs the house down and puts these air scrubbers in the system. And basically like they're essentially like ozone machines, but also they do this like peroxide fog or something. I don't know. But I pay this guy, he goes in these houses, he runs these machines for a few times and it eliminates most of the odor in the house from the cigarette smoke. And then I'll send my painter into the house and we'll do two coats, two coats of oil-based oil -based kills on everything, everything that you can, inside of cabinets, outside of cabinets, um, sometimes a subfloor, uh, obviously walls, ceilings, you name it, everything. He will kills everything to seal in those odors and then he'll come in and paint the house. Now that costs you more money because you're painting a house essentially like three times because you're doing two coats of kills and then you're painting on top of that. And then sometimes if the house is really bad, I'll have to send my odor control guy in there again after the painters are done because sometimes there's lingering odors. Also on a smoker's house, you need to make sure that you have a good duct cleaning company. A duct cleaning company will go in there and they will clean all the ducts. Luckily, a lot of the cigarette odor kind of clings to the dust in the ductwork. And once you clean all that out, you can eliminate a lot of that odor. And then they'll also spray like a fog sanitizing cleaning solution. Uh, because the ducts are like typically like either a, a plastic or a, like a metal, the odors don't really stick to them very well. So when you clean them off, you'll get the smell out. So I like to clean the ductwork. Oh, speaking of ductwork, you need a good HVAC guy. How did I leave that one out? You need multiple HVAC guys because they're going to quote you out for system replacements. HVAC people are going to save your bacon on a number of occasions. So make sure you have a few different good HVAC subcontractors that can repair systems for you, replace systems for you. You name it, you do it. Okay, that's all I can think of for now. Um, let me go through this project in my head real quick and figure if there's anything I forgot. Our most recent project we did... Uh, we've got deck people, we got painters. I'm not going to get into that in this video, but when you're dealing with mobile homes, you need a few other specialized contractors. Um, also, uh, I forgot about this too. You need a good structural engineering company um, that can do engineer, you know, if you're taking out walls, adding beams, if they need, if you need them to come inspect foundations. Oh, that's another one. Foundation repair companies. Make sure you have a few reputable foundation repair companies and don't pick the one you hear on the radio. They're going to, prices are going to be absurd. I'm talking double what some of these other guys will charge. Okay. So good foundation repair company. Um, also from a foundation repair company perspective, a lot of the foundation contractors, 
um, aren't necessarily always waterproofing contractors. So sometimes those are two different people. So waterproofing and then foundation repair, like structural repair. And then a lot of the structural companies will need you to get an engineer to do an engineer write up on it. So that's all I can think of today. I'm sure I probably missed something, but that's how you build your house flipping dream team. You gotta have a team and you gotta have multiples of everybody and make sure you're, you're, you're treating with all of your subs with the utmost respect. Make sure that you're paying them on time. Make sure that you're not nickel and diming them to death. Make sure that you are providing materials. I typically like to provide materials for my people at buy online, pick up in store. Uh, for example, uh, my, my painter has my Sherwin-Williams account. Everything runs on my Sherwin-Williams account. He goes to Sherwin-Williams, he picks up the paint. Try not to deliver stuff to your stuff. Make sure you're doing buy online, pick up in store. If they deliver stuff, make sure they're delivering stuff, especially appliances. I like to buy all my appliances from Lowe's. I hate Home Depot for appliances. I think their appliance uh, vendor that they use for appliances is terrible. I've had nothing but bad luck. Literally have never had a single good, successful delivery or interaction with Home Depot's appliance delivery vendor because they use a vendor and also home depot does not stock appliances in their stores they warehouse everything through this third-party vendor it sounds like it's home depot but it's actually a third-party vendor i don't like them i don't like to order appliances from home depot if at all possible i like to order all my appliances from lowe's and this is just a little tip so here's a little tip for you lowe's warehouses a lot of their appliances at their local stores and what you can do is if you have a flip pick the closest Lowe's store and see if they have appliances in stock. If they have the appliances in stock at that Lowe's store, sometimes you can order appliances today and have them delivered tomorrow to your job site if they're in stock at the store. But you got to make sure that you use the little, you know, available in store today thing. That's what I like about Lowe's for appliances is because they, they warehouse them at the store and they can deliver them the next day. So that's a little pro tip for you. All right, guys. Well, I hope that covers everything. Again, I'm Brad from probatehouseguy.com. Thanks for checking out the video. Hope this helps you out. If you want to learn more about real estate, you want to learn more about doing probate deals, you want to learn more about flipping houses, rental properties, you name it, I'd be happy to help you out. Thanks again for your time. Again, I'm Brad with probatehouseguy.com. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.